Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the new lecture of Multimedia Technology and Application. So this lecture from uh, Book of Data Communication and Network Networking by Behrouz Frozen. So chapter 6 about bandwidth utilization, multiplexing and spreading. So one thing which we need to be study here, this is all about the bandwidth okay so coming to the bandwidth what is bandwidth and its characteristic so bandwidth utilization is the wise use of available bandwidth to achieve specific goal let's see you got 1 MB you got 1 MB so now how you can utilize your 1 MB bandwidth to achieve your own goal how is it like you you have a 1 MB internet let's see and you want to distribute this 1 MB internet into 4 users so you need to be divided by 250 KB so once you are going to utilize the bandwidth by dividing it or by spreading it so this is the basically it's your bandwidth utilization and why you are do why we are doing to convert 1 MB into 250 because we have a full user and we need to uh, give the access to the full user that and we need to be achieve our goal by using an internet so that's why we are going to be distribute 1 MB bandwidth to 250 kilo 250 KB to the user so this is called um, basically bandwidth utilization so but we have a uh, different cases in our telecommunication uh, we use a bandwidth in a microwave you can use a bandwidth in a, a satellite communication so then how we can distribute the bandwidth by frequency division multiplexing wave division multiplexing and time division multiplexing. so we have a lot of method for it okay so how we can distribute 1 MB by using FDMA, by using TDMA and so on. So later on we will study about it. Efficiency can be achieved by multiplexing. What does it mean? E efficiency. He is saying that. Let's see. Uh, you have. Efficiency can be achieved by multiplexing. So what is multiplexing? Simple. Sharing of the bandwidth. Sharing of the bandwidth between multiple user let's see just I'm just telling you just giving a simple example but let's see this is your this is your channel okay uh, this is your bandwidth one bandwidth so now four user want to share four user want to share this bandwidth between each other let's see this is user one this is user two this is user three and this is user four so one channel or one bandwidth or one link is divided into four users so this is called multiplexing okay so later on we will study deeply about the multiplexing but this is a simple concept about it so now coming to our topic about multiplexing so what is multiplexing S simple definition whenever the bandwidth of a medium link linking two devices let's see this is your device one this is your device two and you have a bandwidth here and bandwidth just I'm just drawing like a pipe so once this bandwidth is greater than the bandwidth need of the devices this band this device need a bandwidth this device a bandwidth okay but this bandwidth is greater than the use of these two so at such time what we can do we can share this bandwidth we can share this link between user we can share it by this way so this is basically multiplexing what is multiplexing sharing your bandwidth between the devices uh, sharing your link between the devices. you have a one link so share your one link between two three four and five devices so multiplexing is the set of a techniques which allow the transmission of multiple signal across a single data uh, same again let's see you have user 1 user 2 user 3 user 4 and user 5 and you have just one link so what you are doing to do in multiplexing that all five user wants to transmit their data by using this single link and simultaneously 
simultaneously so all these five devices want to send their data they want to send their want to transfer their data on a single link so this is called multiplexing okay so a topic which we need to study in multiplexing is frequency division multiplexing we can say it fdm wavelength division multiplexing wdm synchronized time division multiplexing in tdm and statistical time division multiplexing again tdm so coming to figure 6.1 dividing a link in two channel we have a link and we are dividing a link into number of channel let's see we have a n number of input line we have a number of user we have a number of user there is a number of so all the user are coming and want to share the data or transfer their data by using one link this is a one link now just simple one pipe okay so what all these are coming to the max uh, we can say max is a multiplexer and max is going to aid all these user and then max is try to transfer all the user data using a one link this is your one link sync so num multiple user are transferring their data using a one link once once it received to the receiver end once it receive to the receiver end so what going to do receiver so receiver have a dmax the multiplexer or dmax so what dmax is going to do dmax or the multiplexer is going to uh, distribute or going to remove all the data of a uh, each single user so let's see you have a n number of user and you had a single one d it's received dmax so all the data of the user is going to be separate now so we have a n number of a uh, user data in the receiver end so this is the procedure of max and dmax so keep in mind whenever you are using a max in the sender side so you need to be use a dmax in the receiver side because you are need you need to be uh, receive your original data so for that we need to use a max and you need to use a dmax and you study already already about max and dmax in digital logic designing as well but it simply can, we can be said like that that max is going to aid all the user and dmax is going to separate all the user again so it's just we, we can say like that so as category of multiplexing as i show you before that we have a multiplexion and multiplexion we have a frequency division multiplexion wavelength division multiplexion and time division multiplexion so keep in mind frequency division multiplexion is analog signal wavelength division multiplexion is always a sig is also a analog and time division multiplexing is digital signal keep in mind so now people can ask what is frequency why is analog because frequency is like if you can send your net frequency division so it can be like analog again you need to find in a wavelength in a wavelength you need to have a wavelength so for wavelength you need to have a cross or trough and you need to find the wavelength of it so that's why we in the frequency division multiplication is analog signal and wavelength division multiplication is analog signal and time division multiplication is a digital signal so let's come to the frequency division multiplexing so in a frequency division multiplexing mean let's say you have a one let's say uh, you have a hundred hertz just simply i'm telling you simply hundred hertz so in a frequency division so what you are going to do you are going to distribute or you are going to divide 100 hertz into number of frequency let's see you can say 10 hertz 10 hertz 10 hertz so divide into 10 10 hertz okay so coming to the we have a number of input line then we have a max okay so max is going to aid all the inputs all the user then it's going to transfer the data it's going to transfer the data of the user using a channel so let's see we have a uh, channel 1 channel 2 and channel 3 so the data of user is going to be transferred by using channel 1 2 3 and then it receives a dmax and what dmax is going to do dmax is going to be separate all the data of a user but one thing keep in mind in frequency division multiplexing we use the concept of modulation if you remember the modulation concept what is it modulation concept is we need we also we also need a carrier 
and carrier is used to transfer your uh, baseband signal or transfer your low uh, frequency signal to a high frequency signal and transfer your data from sender to receiver let's see this is your signal let's see this is your baseband signal for and we need to transfer this signal from sender to receiver so for that we need to add a carrier with a baseband signal so can uh, carrier carrier signal always have a high frequency so so this signal is uh, as the uh, come on the uh, head of or can be overlap with the carrier and carrier can be transfer the signal from sender to receiver when it's receive in the uh, receiver end so what receiver can do receiver can get the original signal and leave the carrier and carrier is come back again here then uh, data is coming here so carrier is going to be take the data and transfer it to the receiver then carrier is come back here then take a data and go back so one thing which is the most important in frequency division multiplication you need to have in a mind that we use a carrier concept or we use a modulation concept in a frequency division multiplexing and more one thing more whenever you are dividing uh, this frequency into number of a user so what we are going to do we are not we, we can't do like that that we have a hundred hertz let's see we have a hundred hertz and we divide this hundred into ten ten hertz okay so one we are dividing to ten 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 so it means ten user can use but we cannot do because whenever you are using frequency division multiplexing we we need to make a distance between two frequency let's see it start from zero to ten let's let i'm telling you let it start from zero to ten for a one user so for a second user we can use from eleven because one hertz can be used for a god band god band just like a god can support you so so one hertz can use for a god band so this god band can be used why we are you are using god band because we need to remove the interference between the frequency so once we have a god band let's see we have a god band like i'm showing you and let's come go give me the space here first let's see this is our bandwidth let's see okay and this is from 0 to 10 let's see then once i use it from 10 to 20 so there is no space and we have a fre same frequency when we, we have a same frequency so it might be like it it will be here interference here and due to interference the ch channel or the signal is going to disturb so for removing the interference and disturbance so what we can do we are going to that we you can say it, it start from 11 hertz or we can say it's from it start from 12 hertz so the distance between two frequencies this is called and this is called god band and use the god band because we need to remove the interference from the signal okay so keep in mind why we are using god band to remove the interference or to reduce the interference so fdm frequency is an analog multiplexing technique that combine analog signal i told you before it use the concept of modulation and you study about already modulation as well so let's coming to figure 6.4 about frequency division multiplexing in a frequency division multiplexing you can see here we have a original signal which is baseband or low frequency signal we have a three signal so what we are going to do we are going to transfer this signal from sender to receiver so when we are transferred from uh, sender to receiver what we are going to do we need to do a modulation we need to use a modulator where we have a carrier so this carrier is going to add with this signal this carrier will add with this one and this will add with this one and our final uh, signal will be like in this form so when it's received when it was uh, it's uh, reached to the receiver end okay so all these frequency is going to be 8 so this is your max now this is your multiplexer now this is not your receiver this is your send this is your sender end up to now and at the sender we are using a max and what max is going to do max is going to add all the frequencies so all the frequencies going to add so our, our final signal which we need to transfer from sender to receiver is this one now so what is the concept behind it the concept behind the fdm is that it's going to aid the uh, it's going to aid the analog signal so all these signals analog analog signal 
and FDM is based work as uh, work based on analog signal. So, and the frequency modulation. Let's see, we have a frequency from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. Okay. So this is let's see, this is one channel. Then there is no station. So no station means there will be a guard band. This will be a guard band. Then we have used a channel of 200 kilohertz. Then star. Then no station channel, no station channel, no station channel, and so on. It will reach to the 108. So this is about the concept of frequency modulation. Sorry, frequency uh, multiplexing, where we can use the channel. Then we need to uh, take a some bandwidth for a guard band to reduce the interference from a signal. Okay. So coming to the figure 6.5 about FDM demultiplexing. So this was the signal as we matted here. This is your signal now. So now it's reached to the receiver end. In a receiver we are using a D max. There is a D max. Okay. This is your D max. So what D max is going to do? D max is going to to filter this signal. So filter this we have a three so it's going to be a filter why we are going to filter because we have a low frequency we have a high frequency we have, have a two high frequency for a so it is a low frequency high frequency and high frequency okay so uh, when it's going to be filter using a uh, frequency like a, we have a different kind of filter low pass filter band pass filter and high pass filter so we are using we are using a low pass filter maybe here we are using band pass filter here we are using a high pass filter here so it depends on the frequency okay so then what we are going to do we are going to use a demodulator why we are using demodulator because uh, demodulate can remove the carrier from the original signal so demodulate is going to remove the carrier from the signal and our signal will be this one the final signal is the same signal is the sender was going to send we are receiving this is what this is what your original signal so this signal is re received here now okay so this is the basic concept behind the frequency division multiplexing using a max d max and modulator and demodulator and again i am telling you that that fdma use a analog concept so coming to the example 6.5 uh, 6.1 assume that a wise channel occupy a bandwidth of 4 kilowatts how, how much is the bandwidth bandwidth is 4 kilohertz we need to combine three wise channel how many channel we need to combine three into a link of 12 kilohertz so our basically the capacity of our link is 12 kilohertz and we need to add a three wise channel okay so each channel will have a four kilohertz so from 20 to 30 kilohertz start and show the configuration using the frequency domain is uh, assume there are no guard band. so we are not using any guard band. so it means we have a three channel for each channel we have a four so it means four multiply with three is 12 kilohertz okay but there is no guard band it's just for your example uh, for your concept because we always need to have a guard band for a signal uh, for a signal so solution is we shift each of a three wise channel to a different so we shift each of a three wise channel to a different bandwidth as shown in the figure 6.6 uh, 6 I will show you later on we use 20 to 24 kilohertz because start is from 20 so 8 4 kilohertz with it it will be start from 20 to 24 bandwidth for the first channel then from 24 to 28 again we add 4 kilohertz for the second channel and for the third it will be 28 to 32 bandwidth for the third one okay so let's see for example the figure 6.6 .6. we have a user user start uh, the bandwidth of for a single user is from 0 to 4 0 to 4 and 0 to 4 yeah, like 4 4 4 it like uh, 12 kilohertz okay so using a modulator shifter because it's an analog signal and low uh, signal low frequency signals for a low frequency signal in a frequency division multiplexing what we are going to do we use a modulator we use a carrier so when using a carrier our signal start from 20 to 24 basically the start is 20 but we add a 4 kilohertz with it with the original signal it can be reached with 20 to 24 then second signal start from 24 to 28 so it will be like this one using a modulator then the third one start from 28 to 32 and at then here we are using a max now so using a max all these frequencies going to be 8 and uh, our 
total bandwidth will be start from 20 to 32 so this signal is going to be transferred from a sender to receiver and it will reach to the receiver and in the receiver we have a dmax and dmax is going to be use a filter band pass filter we are using here why we are using a band pass because this frequency is starting around 20 to 32 it's not start from zero so when we are it's not starting from a zero so we use uh, band pause filter and it's not also a high pause uh, high frequency so data you are using a band pause filter and band pause filter is going to be uh, remove a high frequency uh, the high frequency from the signal and we receive your original signal and this is your receiver end now so this is the concept behind the frequency division multiplexing so coming to another example example 6.25 channel each with a uh, 100 kilohertz bandwidth or to be multi plex together what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is a need for a god band of 10 kilohertz so now we need to have a 10 kilohertz bandwidth so what is our basically the bandwidth is 100 so how many channel we have 5 multiply with 5 this is our original bandwidth now okay this is our first bandwidth we can say 5 kilo 500 kilohertz then how much bandwidth is going to be it we have a 10 kilohertz god band for each signal and so how many signal we, how many channel we have five so it means we need to have a four god band because let's see this is we have a four five channel channel one two three four five so how many god band will be one two three and four so how many god band will we have four so it will be 40 kilohertz okay so what we are going to do at the end so what is our required bandwidth what is our total bandwidth for a five channel now so 500 plus 40 it will be 540 kilohertz so this is our total bandwidth which we need to transfer our five channel data to from sender to receiver so if you can see the uh, figure 6.7 and the figure 6.7 if we have a five channel we have a five channel channel one two three four five and we have a four guard band one two three four guard band and each channel have a bandwidth of 100 kilohertz 100 kilohertz 100 kilohertz and the guard band is a 10 kilohertz so the total required band is 540 kilohertz coming to the another example like a for a data for a four data channel each transmitting at a one mega mbps use a satellite channel of 1 megahertz we are using a satellite channel so satellite channel have a bandwidth of 1 megahertz design in a project configuration using fdma so a satellite channel is analog i told you before because using fdma so in fdma it will be a analog so we divide it into a four data channel so 1 megahertz is going to divide by a four because we have a four channel so for each channel we have a 240 kilohertz bandwidth now so for each channel how many uh, bandwidth we have 240 kilohertz each digital channel of a 1 mbps must, uh, must be transmitted over a 20 250 kilohertz now so assuming no why no noise we can use nequis so as you know about a nequis theorem in a nequis theorem we have a bandwidth how much is the bandwidth bandwidth is 250 okay sorry the in a nequis equation we have a data rate so we have a data rate 1 mbps we have a bandwidth of 250 2 and uh, need to have a formula for the number of a level so once you uh, solve this we have a this one we have this we have this we have so we need to find this so you using a calculator so number of level we are using is 4 so we have a 4 level it means we have a 2 bit per signal because 2 raised to power 2 so it's going to be 4 so we have a 4 level and 2 bit so 2 bit per signal element okay so one solution is 4 q cram so i hope you guys know about a cram modulation so i'm showing you in a uh, figure now so in a cram we are using a 16 level so when we are using 16 we are using a 4 bit okay so coming to the cram configuration like so you have this so we have a 1 mbps data rate digital signal okay then we need to uh, use a cram 16 cram so 16 cram uh, is going to be transfer your digital to analog 
is going to be transfer the signal from digital to analog QM is used for a uh, for conversion of a digital to analog signal okay then coming to uh, this one again so we have one two three four signal now which have a 250 kilohertz analog signal then using a frequency division multiplexing all these signals is going to be eight and at the end again we have a one megahertz uh, bandwidth so one megahertz band is going to be transfer all the data uh, in this channel okay so this is your single channel of one megahertz which divide into this one so this is basically um, uh, why we are using a cam just keep in mind we have a different cam 4 cam 8 cam 16 cam 32 cam but cam is basically used basically used for converting a uh, digital signal to analog signal so hope you study about the QM in your data communication. We, uh, there is a, a lot of explanation in a data communication book. So go to go through your data communication book and study it again if you don't have any concept. Okay. So coming to the another example, uh, coming to the analog Hirachi of FDMA. So let's see. We have a number of select. So we have a 12 wires channel, and each channel have a 4 kilohertz bandwidth. Okay. So 12 multiplier 4 is 48 kilohertz. So our main group, the link will be 48 kilohertz, which have a 12 wise channel. Okay. Then coming to another FDM. So we have a this channel, which is 48. Then we have a five group again. Five group mean each group have a. So we have a one, two, three, four, five groups. So five group, which is having a 48 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz. So 48 multiplied by five, it can be. 240 kilohertz so we have a 5 so uh, 12 multiplier 5 is it will be 60 wise channel now so we have a super group now then again we have a 10 super group so 10 super group mean every each group have a 240 kilohertz so multiply 10 with the uh, 10 with the 240 so our result will be 2.52 megahertz and we have a 60 so 60 multiply with the 10 it's reached to be 600 wise channel then when it's reached to a 600 wise channel, it's going to make the master group. So then we have a six master group. So 2.52 multiply with six, it can be 16.984 megahertz. And we have a 600 channel for a one master group. We have a six, so multiply with a six, so it can reach to a 3600 wise channel. So then we re reach to be our jumbo group. So it's just simply uh, analog Hiroshi that how we can. Uh, a number of let's see we have a one uh, let's see we are saying that this is in a cobble let's see in a cobble we have a khana then can reach to this one let's see this is says the ponzar then we just reach to this location it can be like your shari now when it's reached to this one let we can say it's a data of a whole cobble center and which we have just single link this single link is going to transfer your data to the server so this is basically hirachi of uh, analog or fd and we have frequency division multiplexing so this is the another example for using a amp system uh, advanced uh, mobile phone system and we have a two uh, channel like we have a uplink channel and we have a downlink chain uplink start from 824 to 849 and downlink start from 8692 894 it's used in a gsm hope you guys know about it so what is the difference between uh, so each user has a bandwidth of 30 kilowatt in each direction if you can uh, see the bandwidth between the, the users it can be 30 kilohertz so how many can people can be used their cellular phone simultaneously so so if you can uh, find out the different differences like 25 megahertz okay so each band is 25 megahertz if we divide 25 megahertz by 30 kilohertz because for uh, each direction we have a 30 kilohertz so we need to reach to 833.33 channel okay so an 833 channel we use 42 channel for a controlling so hope you study about a uh, uh, number of a channel in uh, wireless communication that we have uh, some channel used for a uh, controlling for a system controlling so 42 channel is going to use for a controlling system and remaining 790 channel are available for uh, phone user okay if you can study about we have basically a slot in a slot we have a 32 channel in 32 the first and the last one is using for a uh, controlling and system use then and the remaining 30 is going to use for the user okay 
So this is the example about a wireless communication. So coming to the uh, wavelength division multiplexing. So wavelength division multiplexing is just like a same like a FDMA, but what it's going to do again? We have a uh, like a three frequencies or a three signal using a um, uh, using a wavelength, and we use a WDM wavelength division multiplexing. So all these things are going to combine like in this form then it's going to be uh, sent from a sender to receiver so in the receiver we have again wdm is going to be separate all of these three channel into like we can say lambda one lambda two lambda three in the sender side then lambda one lambda two lambda three in the receiver side so again the same like a frequency division multiplexing so WDM is an analog multiplexing technique to combine optical signal as I mentioned during in the start date FDM and uh, WDM is used for uh, analog multiplexing. Let's come to the uh, WDM uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing. So it's just like a prism if you just uh, know about a prism so it's work like a prism like we have a lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 we have three uh, different uh, wavelength okay so in three different wavelength we are using a max so so what going to do the max max is going to add all these three wavelengths okay once it's going to add all these three wavelengths so it's using a uh, fiber optic cable so we have a lambda one lambda two lambda three lambda four so so once you are using a um, uh, prism like this so it's uh, so uh, prism can fix all these wavelength into us one link so it's going to link so once it's reached to a receiver or a D max, so in a D max when it's passed from a uh, one uh, so one signal or one channel is going to pass from a prism, so again it's going to be spread. So it's going to spread in a lambda one, lambda two, lambda three. So it's the uh, procedure of D max. The same like a frequency using a max, D max, add and then remove or uh, subtract. Okay. So this is about your FDM and WDM concept. Or it will be it will help you in your education in your learning so once you have any question raise in your comment thank you for your time see you in a next lecture